What up with it? QT Couple hollering at you. And today, if you're trying to do sublimation ink printing with a heat press and all your prints keep coming out faded like this, this video may help you out. So this is where we started. This is where we got in between. And here's our final result. That's the print that we really wanted. Look at all three of them in comparison. And you can see on the shirt, I got all kind of tests going on. But look at those three. That's our start. That's our middle. And that we finally got our settings dialed in a bit. That's the final result. And I think we can get even better. So let me show you what we had to personally do in order to get our prints to go from this to this. So the whole issue in our process that we found, we, we were thinking maybe it's crappy ink, maybe it's crappy printer, maybe it's crappy paper. It turned out that our heat press and we're using the HPN signature series wasn't properly calibrated. So although we thought we had the proper temperature, we didn't. So we had to use this little guy here, which is the infrared gun. And we had to measure it in order to calibrate this guy. So your heat press might simply need a calibration. Let me show you how we did it with our HPN signature series. Our current temperature says 226. You get a little reading from the uh, infrared right here. And you see that it's at 232. So it's off, but it's not crazy off. And in our personal case, we decided to calibrate it in a manner in which the infrared is showing a little bit higher than what the heat press is showing. And the reasoning behind that is that we wanted it a little bit hotter than what we see up there. Could we rather have it a little bit too hot in our case than a little bit too cold? So if you got this particular heat press, let me show you how to do that. And if you got a different heat press, of course, you'll have to look up the instructions for that heat press. But on the signature series, you just hold the OK button for about 10 seconds. Boom. And it takes you to this secondary screen here, the P1 screen. And right here, you see we have ours at negative four. So you can adjust that up or down. With the arrows, I'm gonna leave ours at negative four. And what you have there is a reading of the temperature. So it says 242. So you do a measurement. Let me show my hand here. Do a measurement. Make sure you're not angling the infrared gun this way. Make sure you're aiming it that way to get a more accurate reader. So we see 242. Here we got 243. So right now it's pretty close. So just keep doing that. Checking, validating what you see on your actual heat press. Checking again with the infrared gun and then adjusting accordingly. It might be minus, it might be plus for you. Once you think you got that dialed in pretty close, hit OK. And then make sure that P2 is set to one because it can go up and I'm not sure if it'll go negative. Let's see, it won't go negative. So make sure that's at one, press okay. And boom, you'll have the proper temperature settings because we tried an extreme case where we had this thing set to 10 minutes <laughs> and the display said 400 because we were, you know, last straw effort. We were like, man, we don't know what else to try. So we said, let's just press it for 10 minutes, which is crazy. And the press came out better. So I was like, the temperature must be way cooler than what it's showing. So after we got our settings right, we found that for us, a temperature between 380 degrees and 400 degrees Fahrenheit and a time between 40 seconds and a minute and 10 seconds tends to get us in the ballpark of a pretty good press. Of course, it can be adjusted if you wanna say set it at 380 for a longer period of time of let's say a minute or 10, you can do that. Or if you wanna set it at 40 seconds and maybe uh, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, you could try that as well. But typically when we stay in those ranges, our presses have been coming out pretty good. That's what we personally did to make our prints better. Of course, there's uh, different methods and different videos out there in regards to getting better prints, the best paper, the best ink, etc. But this was a key piece that changed the game for us. So let me know if this video helped you out. If you got any more questions or any more tips like that, put it down in the comment section below. We would greatly appreciate it. Anybody else that's trying to do presses would probably greatly appreciate it as well. Thank you for watching this quick video. Peace.